Hi. So, um, I had this nice experience the other day on, on, on set. Um, I was working as a visual effects supervisor on this film, and that's a role that I'm not uh, that experienced in. To be honest, being on set singularly to focus on the visual effects is, is, is not something I'm that used to. And I was kind of nervous to do it because um, <laughs> I, I think I was afraid that I maybe wasn't going to be useful on set because, you know, the director and I had had a plan for how to use visual effects on this film that we were working on, which is pretty much the entirety of them are meant to be uh, invisible. I mean, I guess every effect is meant to be invisible, but particularly these, these ones, it's not a, it's not an effects film by any means. So I, I was, I, I felt a little self-conscious being a visual effects supervisor on a film that by all means shouldn't have any visual effects. Um, and so I had this nice moment on the first day when I was sort of able to clarify for myself even, uh, <laughs> what exactly I was there to do. And it was when I was talking to the production designer, I, I had just met her and she was talking about this shot that we had been planning to do where we were gonna replace the wallpaper digitally on this location, which was actually the subject of my last video, um, showing you how I did that. Um, but her, she was frustrated about something else, which was for production reasons, they had to shoot in the opposite direction that they had planned initially, which was not as good for her because there weren't as many options for, you know, um, set design things, there was less she could do looking this way. And she brought with her this painting that she was hoping she could hang up on the set. Um, but because of the direction they were now shooting in, she wasn't able to put it anywhere. And so that was the moment where it occurred to me that I could potentially offer a solution with visual effects. Um, or at least I hoped I could. And so I asked her if I could take the painting um, and she gave it to me and I uh, wandered off to find the uh, stills photographer on set and I asked him if he could take some pictures of it and so he did and I got this uh, you know 4k photo and neutral light of this painting Um I took out my laptop I fired a blender uh, I took the measurements of the painting I modeled it really quickly in blender I reprojected the picture that the stills photographer took onto the digital model as an image texture and you know within 15 minutes or something I had this and so I was able to call the production designer over to my laptop and, and, and just point to that. And because I had the test shot of the wallpaper I had done, I was actually able to stick the painting onto the wall that we were, we were literally just standing next to it, talking about it 15 minutes previously. And I was able to, you know, show her her painting that she had wanted to hang up. And it was on the wall, um, a digital wall, but a wall nonetheless. Um, and so that was an exciting moment um, for me because I was able to just, well, one, I was able to show it to other people and say, well, this is what I'm here to do. Um, and, and it, you know, I, w I would say every scene in the film <laughs> by the end of it probably has a visual effects shot like that planned for it, you know? So uh, what I want to do now is I want to just uh, demonstrate kind of how really straightforward this is to do because you know, I only ever learned visual effects so I could do this on, on my own films, but it, and it's taken me a while to actually integrate it into my process. But now that I kind of have it figured out, I want to show you just how genuinely simple and straightforward it is. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's jump into it. So you can open a new workspace, and uh, you can just click A to select everything, X to delete everything, because we don't need any of that. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to get the measurements of whatever object it is that you're going to be using. I'm using this painting, and um, but you know whatever it is you're using, you just want to measure the length, the height, and the width, and then you can add in your base shapes. You're going to do Shift A to bring up this Add menu. And then you're going to want to add a mesh and you'll get this other menu and you're going to want to add in whatever shape it is. It's probably going to be a cube. It's a very standard one, but for this, we're going to use a cylinder because it's meant to be an oval shape. So you can hop in here. If you click tab, you'll go into edit mode, and then we're just going to scale it to the measurements that we have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate on the Y axis, get it like this. And we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees. So you can just do that. And you can go down to this little menu here and type in 90. Um, and then we're going to scale it on the x-axis to your measurements. Um, I don't remember what the measurements were for this painting, but you know, it was something like this. That's your, I mean, you can scale it on the y-axis like that, and then scale it on the z-axis like that. And that's, you know, pretty close. And so once you have this, you're, <laughs> you're halfway there. And um, it's really not that hard. Um, so then we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to go down to your material properties down here. We're going to add a new material. And you're going to get this menu here. And once you have that, you can go to base color. If you click this little yellow circle here, you'll get a menu like this. You can go to image texture 
and then you can find your picture. So this is going to be the picture you're going to use to actually give it its texture. So I am going to use uh, this one of the painting that I have right here. And then if you go up to Material Preview and click that, you're going to get this. And it's now projecting the image. It just needs to, we just need to give it the coordinates so it knows how to do it correctly. So you can go into the UV Editing tab up here. You can select your image, pop into the X view, so we're just right in front of it. And then you can click with all of your uh, vertices selected. You can just click U, project from view. And now that should give you, sorry, if you go back to material preview here, now you can see the painting is being projected on here. And now you can see these points correlate to um, the geometry of the painting. So we can go in here in this, in this window, we can click A to select everything and then scale it up to match. Um, and just keep moving it around until we get generally the right um, sort of shape. And you can see the way mine doesn't line up properly there. If you have your perfect measurements, it will, but you can also just use the proportional editing tool, which is this button up here, if you, or the shortcut O, and then you can grab a certain point and it'll just, it'll give you the circle and or anything inside the circle will be moved proportionally. Um, so you can, that's a good way to just move points like this. You can just put the wheel there and then just drag it up like that and then pick this one down here and drag it down like that and just move all the points until they're right on the edge of the uh, frame. And then you should get something that looks like this. And already, you know, it's uh, it's looking good. So, you know, we've already got sort of a painting. If that was in the, you know, in the background of a scene, that would be fine. But uh, if, you, we, if you want it up close, you can get a whole lot of detail in it. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go back to the layout mode. Let's click this, tab back into edit mode. And now we're just gonna start insetting. And so what we want to do is we want to give ourselves more geometry so we can start moving things. Right now, this is just a perfectly flat face, but we want to be able to give the frame its own sort of beveled edges and those, you know, ornate designs. So what we need to do is we need to select this edge loop so we can go into edge select mode, which is this button up here. We can click Alt click on an edge and that selects uh, the entire edge all the way around. So if you just click on it, it selects one edge. If you Alt click, it selects the entire loop. And then with that selected, we want to hit I to inset. And this is just going to create a smaller version of that. And then left click to set it in place. And then we basically just want to keep doing that anywhere where there's an edge. So we just keep going to all these places and you'll sort of see the pattern of, of what I'm actually after here. Like that, inset again. And now we should have the pieces we need to start pushing things in and moving things out. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to work from the inside out is just I'm going to click E to extrude. And I'm going to extrude the actual canvas of the painting in a little bit. And now you can see we have sort of a 3D thing, you know, going on. And then I'm going to take uh, this edge here. I'm going to Alt click to select that entire loop again. And I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it on the X axis outwards a little bit. With that edge loop still selected, I'm going to hit Control B to bevel it. And I'm going to slide that up. And then if you just slide the scroll wheel up, you'll get all these little bits here. And you can see what those do now is it's just giving us a nice smooth sort of bump on that part of the frame. And then I'm going to go to the middle sort of bump or one that looks like the middle. I'm going to again, alt click, select that loop. You're going to be doing that a lot in this process. So that's a handy one to remember. I'm going to click G to grab it. And with proportional editing on, I'm going to click X and I'm going to bring it forward and you can see now that that gives us that kind of bump, which is great. Uh, and, and you can see there, if you look at it, you can actually see the edges, which isn't very realistic. So if you want to select the object in object mode and then right click and then go to shade smooth and that just gets rid of that. Um, and now it's looking real smooth and that's great. And so now we can keep going. We can select, we go to face select mode and we select a face here and then alt select. It's going to select that entire loop of faces. And then what we want to do is uh, maybe inset that slightly like that or something. And then if we go to the very outer loop, alt click again, select the entire loop, control B, same again. We're just going to bevel that like so. And now after just a few minutes of work, you've got like a painting that actually looks, you know, the geometry is actually correct. Now you might notice on the edge here that all these edges are stretched, this uh, texture is stretched. And what that is, is that because we projected it from view and we were at the front view, it means that the side of it was not being projected properly. So we're gonna go in here and we can just fix that in UV editing mode. We can click 
uh, a face and then and then alt click again you'll select this entire loop of faces and from here we can just click U and then instead of doing project from view this time we're going to do a Q projection and that's going to give us all of these faces you can see it's just given us this sort of straight line here you can select all of those and then we're just going to scale them down so I can turn off proportional editing scale them down and then we're just going to find them somewhere uh, where they're sort of out of the way like here and that's going to give them that texture of that little area there so you can see now it's you know it's not great but we, we the reason I'm, I'm not focusing too much on that is because we don't see that part of the frame so now i mean that's pretty good again if that's in the background you're you're good to go you're probably finished but what i wanted to do and, and what i did before i showed this to anyone on set was i just wanted to give the material a little more love so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it is we're going to hop into the shader editor so one of the cool things you can do is you can set the roughness value and the roughness is how reflective something is you can see if i turn that all the way down this thing looks like it's made out of glass uh, if i turn it all the way up it doesn't really reflect anything like it's made out of i don't know stone or something um and it's automatically set at, at 0.5 um but what you can also do is you can actually have the image texture itself dictate the roughness of the image and how you do that is you take the color from this and you just drag this over here and you plug it into the roughness and it should give you something that looks like this. So now you can see it looks really glossy, um, but it's not uniform. It's like this part looks, you know, this part doesn't look that glossy, but up here looks really glossy. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to control that slightly. So we're going to click Shift A to get this menu. We're going to go to search bar and we're going to type in color ramp. And then we're going to plug this in between these two. And if you just drop it there, it'll plug itself in. And so what we want to do is adjust the white value here. And the more we bring this down, you can see the less glossy it actually gets. And now you can see as I move along it, it actually reacts differently to the light depending on the color of the area. And that doesn't look exactly like paint when you get that close, but it does do something. <laughs> it does do something interesting. Now, another thing you can do, and you probably do want to do this, is you can separate out bits into different materials. So if we don't want the if we want you know that might work for the actual paint uh, the sort of the canvas but it might not work for the frame so what we can do is we can select the paint area and then we can click Control i to invert our selection and then we can add a new material and assign all of this to the new material and then we can just hop back in here you know copy all this and then paste it into the new material delete this uh, and paste it into the new material and now we can adjust this separately to the original so we, we might want to make the uh we might want to make this um, a little glossier, perhaps. Or maybe not, actually. Maybe we want it a little dusty, because that sort of works for the scene. It was meant to be the sort of dusty old B&B. &B. So that actually works really nicely there. You can see it's, um, you know, that now they have two sort of slightly different textures. Now, another thing we can do is, um, wait, it looks good, but the, but the texture still is... 2d i mean if you go fully you know flat against it you can see that there isn't any there aren't any variations it doesn't feel painted or in the case of the frame it doesn't feel you know like it was made by hand it just all feels very very smooth and so what we can do here is we'll do it on the frame because it might be easier to see is we can take a, the way we plug the image into the roughness you can also do that by plugging the image into the normal and what that'll do is it's going to take the same information that information from the photo itself but it's going to translate that into 3D um, data and it's going to displace the image slightly. So it's going to look now like it's got little bumps on it. And so once you've done that, you might not see anything straight away, but what you need to do first is you need to, the same way we sent the roughness through a color map, we need to send this through something called a bump map. The bump map is going to make it bumpy. It's going to make it actually into 3D. So we can just drop this here. It'll plug itself in automatically. It'll plug into the normal, but we want to just adjust that. So it plugs itself into the height and then you should see now look at that <laughs> it looks insane um so now you can see it's actually you can see what it's doing it's taking the information and it's it's displacing the uh, geometry slightly um and what's funny about this is you can actually see that you can see the pixelation of the image itself is is being displaced that's what those like squares are that's actually just pixels <laughs> so that's not great but this is way too intense we don't need it to be this intense we just want to imply it so you can just turn the strength way 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 down like that and then if you zoom back out you know to a reasonable distance now it's starting to look really good and now as you sort of float around and look at it now you can see like 
That just looks great there, that bump. You know, when you get really close, you can start to see, oh yeah, that's pixels. But from a distance, it looks sort of like someone's brushed it or something. It looks like a paintbrush stroke almost. And so then you can just do the same thing for the actual texture of the, uh, of the painting itself. And there you go. Now you've got a painting in your scene. And so this is what I was able to show Lily, the production designer, I called her over and, you know, that's exactly what the painting looked like when she was holding it up. So that was exciting. I mean, how long did that take us? Like 10 minutes? It's really quick. It's really not that hard. And, uh, you know, I think it's very exciting. I don't know. I, I, I do. I, I, if you're like me as a filmmaker, you're just constantly banging your head against the wall at how hard it is to do anything. <laughs> And so to have this as an option when you can't hang a painting, something as simple as hanging a painting to be able to just, you know, one picture, pop it into Blender and get this, you know? So yeah, I, uh, that's sort of, I don't know, that's gonna be the thesis for a lot of what I do <laughs> on this channel. Cause that's, that's where I see the most promise for it. I was saying the other day to someone that, you know, my excitement about a given effect is directly tied to how unlikely anyone is to notice that it's an effect. Ideally, I don't want anyone to know that I worked on the film at all because, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like going to a movie and noticing all the visual effects. I want to be, I love watching those visual effects breaks, breakdowns for like a David Fincher film or something where you're just like, what, why, <laughs> why is any of this stuff done digitally? And then when you think about it, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Um, you know, saves time, saves money. It's, uh, it gives you so much control over everything, you know, literally I can control, I can control, you know, how bumpy the canvas is on a painting. Like that's, you know, that's really, that's really uh, exciting. And also, you know, if we wanted to, then we could swap out the actual painting itself. You know, we could use a different painting from somewhere else, or we could change the color of the, uh, of the frame, or we could make it bigger, we can make it smaller, we can, we can do anything. So yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to keep showing how to do little effects like this and, and, and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's, it's useful to you. So, um, so yeah, thank, thanks for watching and, uh, bye-bye.